Welcome, this is a fretboard logic guitar lesson. I wanna show you this really simple way to be able to take any chord that you can play and find easily many other places to play that exact same chord, being able to manipulate it, pretty much finding that same chord anywhere else that it could possibly exist on the fretboard and without any sort of chord shape and drill memorization exercises. But in order to do that, we need to understand the logic of the fretboard first. There are two essential components for mastering this fretboard logic and understanding the layout of the guitar. I'm Jared from soundguitarlessons.com and this is episode 11 of a big lesson series about how to master chords and understand the theory behind them on the guitar. This lesson will stand on its own, but some elements of it might be much clearer if you've watched certain episodes of this series before. I'll tell you exactly which episodes those are as we might need that information throughout the lesson. And there is a link to a playlist of the full series in the description. Like I said, in order to have this ability to freely manipulate chords and find many options of the same chord all over the guitar, you need to have these two things down that I'm gonna show you in this lesson. The first one is being able to find octaves of any note. In certain locations. I have a specific way that I want to show you to make sure you see that and, and work on that. And then the other one is being able to take any note and move it to an adjacent string, the same exact pitch, but easily being able to see where that exists somewhere else. For both of these, I have really specific ways that I recommend practicing and learning them uh, that are super effective. So even if you think you know these things already, check out how I recommend viewing them and see if it, it very well might help you be come even more swift at seeing these options on the fretboard. I do have another video where I talk about octave shapes and mapping out the fretboard in that way, but that's specifically designed and approached for finding the note names of any note anywhere on the guitar, any string, any fret. Uh, so it's presented a little bit in a different way. If you do need help uh, finding note names anywhere on the guitar, I definitely recommend checking out that video. So here's the exercise for seeing octaves. I call it the closest octave exercise. So you wanna take a note on the sixth string and you wanna play this note. We're gonna start on the sixth string, we're to go through all the strings and then you want to play the note that is an octave away from it now this is part of learning the octave shapes i'm giving them to you here you want to learn this to to get this down so what i'm calling to the left of the guitar like this is uh that's that's the direction i'm saying when i say to the left so when you start with this note here uh, you have one octave that is over to the left as far as closest uh physical proximity um I say it's closest physical proximity. That same note is over here too, and we're not worrying about that. So that's our octave shape that we wanna learn right there. On this side, we're gonna have an octave right here on the right side, okay? So that's your octave shape there. So you want to play this note and then play the octave over here and then play the octave over here. I'm gonna demonstrate on the guitar, but this diagram is uh, helpful to for us to start with. All right, now we're gonna do this off the fifth string. I'm just gonna do off the seventh fret again. You can really do this anywhere, but the octave shape changed this. That's why we wanna do this uh, throughout all these strings. The octave shape now is this other physical distance where there's only one fret in between because of the tuning of the guitar. It's gonna always throw things off when we're mapping stuff out. The shape over here is the same as up there, so we really wanna get used to seeing those. So anytime you're playing a note and there's strings above, you wanna be, be very aware of like, oh, that same note is an octave above over here and it's an octave above over here. This is massive for understanding the fretboard, analyzing stuff, whatever, seeing that the same notes exist in a chord, all kinds of uses. Of course, we're gonna do the same thing off the next string here. So now our octave shape is here. So we're seeing that, and that's the same physical shape as we had up there. And then our physical shape changes on the right side. So here's our octave shape on the left side. Here's our octave shape on the right side. So definitely recommend just playing through these uh, kind of up and down the way I'm saying to get used to the fact that these shapes are different in different places and kind of hear them and explore them that way. Off the third string, we do not have a octave opportunity on the left side because we run out of space. So we're just going to play the octave that we have on the right side up towards the body of the guitar. And that's that same physical shape as the other one because of the tuning of the guitar. That's as far as we can go ascending with this exercise. I want you to do the same thing descending. So we're gonna start on the highest note of the guitar. We're going to play the octave that is over to the left. Now we have to really think in a different way. So now we're seeing that shape and then we play the octave that's over to the right. So again, even if you knew this stuff is there, kind of walking through this can very can really help with, with how we see the fretboard. 
Um, if you haven't known this before, then this is huge, and this is going to be the most efficient way to work on it and learn it. So our octave shape now down from this note is that distance, and our octave shape down from this note to the right side is that other distance. Of course, we want to go down the string, so now we're starting here, and then we're finding the octave that is below it there to the left, and we're finding the octave that is below it there to the right. Octave to the left, octave to the right. All right, moving on, we're finding the octave off of this third string, going down an octave to the left, and down an octave to the right. This is a great exercise. I know a lot of people are familiar with seeing maybe a root here and seeing that octave, right? And like, that's it, that's what we think of as an octave shape. Great, that's a great start but we're seeing them from all these other um, angles and directions now as well. We wanna see them all equally for sure. Next string is the fourth string and we run out of space to go to the right side. We just are gonna have this to the left version. We can't go over here, we run out of strings. I'll go ahead and play through exactly what I just showed you on the diagrams on the guitar so you can see and hear it as well. All right, here we go. I'm gonna play that sixth string, seventh fret. My octave shape, I don't care about what fingers you use here. Don't think, it, don't worry about fingers. Can be anything you want, okay? Just seeing that, wow, that again, unusual octave shape if we're used to other octave shapes. Here's the common one out here. So we play it to the left, play to the right, fifth string, over to the left, wanna see that clearly, play to the right, fourth string, over to the left, over to the right, and third string, we just get that one, we can't play over to the left. So that was up, going down, just like we did through the diagram. There's that octave, there's the octave to the right, next string, there's my octave, next string, next string, next string. These are all the same, when you do the octave, obviously it's the same pitch, that's the whole point. That's D, that's D, that's D, that's D. Okay, off the fourth string, we get that octave and we don't have one to the left. So that's the exercise. The other essential skill is being able to transfer a note to another string, not an octave away, the same pitch, but on another string. A lot of people will recommend to just memorize a certain number of frets away that you have to go to find the same pitch on another string. I find that, and that can work and that's fine, I find that thinking of it in just a little bit of a different way is um, easier and more effective to see it quickly and not com be confused about counting frets. Instead of thinking of a number of frets, we're gonna think with pieces of the major scale. Earlier in the series, I talked about how the major scale is our measuring stick and how it's crucial to be able to count with it all over the fretboard anywhere, even if we're not in a major key. You can go to episodes two and three of this series to see a thorough explanation of what I mean by that and how to work on it. Similar to the closest octave exercise, we're gonna take any one note and then find that note option that same note on the string above and below which are going to be to the left on the neck and to the right on the neck all right here's how this works we're going to go ahead and just think on the seventh fret again just to give us room on on those two sides to find the notes but of course you can do it anywhere so we're going to find this note start with this note here and then what i want you to do is find three on the next string and this is where that's counting stuff comes in handy. If you know your scale forms, you could find this would be one, and this would be two, and this would be three, or this is one, and this is two, and this is three. That's part of being able to count through the major scale on the guitar and cross strings. We learned that in other episodes, in episodes two and three, that's what you gotta go check out if you're not familiar with this. That from this to this, two to three here, is the distance of a whole step crossing strings, and that's another crucial thing to know on the fretboard uh, for being able to do all of this stuff. So that's why I covered it earlier, so we could refer to it now. So we're just gonna say, cool, you know how to find three. If this is one, this is three. Um, so once you found three, then I just want you to think there's two here and there's one here, and these are the same note. That's much simpler than just saying, okay, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five frets over. It's very kind of vague feeling to count a number of frets, and it still kind of feels like guessing, but this is kind of part of musical context, even if you're not on a major scale. It's like chunking information. You can chunk these two whole steps as a view, uh, your perspective can see them just by looking at the fretboard, imagining the fretboard so much easier than trying to think one, two, three, uh, four, five frets over. So now we have this way of kind of mapping out that these two are the same note and having it just seem kind of obvious to us. Takes a little practice of doing it, but uh, that is the way I recommend. So we do indeed want to play this and I'm going to demonstrate it on the guitar after. We're going to do it in two ways. One where we actually play these notes to walk through the in-between notes and, and find it that way. And another where we just visualize these and jump straight to that note. And it's really great practice. So on the other side 
uh, we cannot do anything because we're on our lowest string. So we got to just move to the next string here. And on this string to the left of the neck, you're going to get the same thing. Here's one, here's three, here's two, and there's one. These are the same note you're visualizing. On the other side of it here, here's what I want you to do. We're going to find the same note to, to the right side over on this side. Um, so I actually want you to visual find where five is. You can count to it, but if one is here on a fifth string, five is always on the same fret below it. That's totally part of counting with the major scale on the guitar as well. So if you need to find that and count it um, until it's just obvious and you know that, then that is fine. You would do that by saying, well, seven is right below it always because one and seven is a half step apart. And then six is a whole step and that's our whole step shape crossing strings. Again, episodes two and three explain all of this very well and give you an exercise for that. And then six to five is a whole step or six is here as well. So seven to six and then six to five is a whole step. So in any case, just kind of saying it's that's how we know that those are there. But we want to just say, all right, great. Well, five is here. So we're jumping to five. So once you have your note you want to find, you go to five. Now that you played five, you're going to play six and you're going to play seven and you're going to play one. So again, we're walking with the scale and the logic of the scale and chunking this information and seeing this as a whole step and a whole step. And then knowing that that's a half step above, it's still much easier to visualize than thinking, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, trying to count a number of frets over and just thinking of it kind of blankly like that. Okay, so we played our fifth string and then we counted over to find it to the left and then we played it here and we counted over to find it on the right. I'll hear, hear examples in a sec. Let's move on to the next string. Um, on the next string is going to be the exact same thing, so it's going to be quite easy for us to see. So we're going to have three, two, one and play over there. We're going to have five, six, seven, and one and play over there. And I'll show you the distances here. Three, two, one. This is one, five, six, seven, one. Just want to emphasize again, this does not mean you're in this key. It does not mean that's the root of the scale or the root of the chord. You're using it as a measuring stick to just quickly see distances, right? So this could be anything or from any scale or any tonality. doesn't matter. You're still just using that as a quick way to see distances. All right, next string. And this is why it's important to go through all of these because now your three is going to be here because of the tuning of the guitar. So it's not here anymore. It's uh, one fret higher. So here's two and here's one. And then five, six, seven, and one is going to be the same kind of counting distance as we did before. So that's very important off the third string. Let's move on to the next string off the second string here. We have the three, two, one that we did originally. Great. And now the bottom end, five, is going to be here. It's one fret over from what it was in these examples uh, above. Okay, again, because of the tuning of the guitar, six, seven, one that's one and of course everywhere where i'm writing one and where the black dots are that is uh, those are the same pitches uh, pre precisely the same pitches and then lastly we want to do it on the top string i'm going to go up here uh, to do that just because i ran out of fretboard diagrams to work with on this sheet so uh, we can't go above so we're going to go to the five here and there's five not one one six seven one Okay, so we just do this version. That's exactly what we did here, and it's exactly what we did here. It's exactly what we did here. Yes, that is repeating itself a lot. And every time, if when you walk through this, don't just memorize where you jump to. Think five, six, seven, one. Because out of context of this exercise, you're not going to have that one that you just did before that on the previous string to give you a reference. You're going to have to think of it from scratch. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate it for you on the guitar here. We're playing this seventh fret. You find three. Count to it if you need to with the major scale knowledge from the previous episodes. We found three. Three to two is a whole step. Two to one is a whole step. And you see we're going to be able to visualize this. I know it seems so rudimentary, but I'm telling you, this kind of uh, mastering these rudiments are what give us real fluidity and uh, proficiency. So three to two, two to one, uh, one, three, two, one, same note. Okay, now I can really see very clearly uh, that this and this are the same note, not from just memorizing like, okay, I'm kind of seeing it. I'm really seeing this context, this kind of um, invisible web that connects them. And that is this whole step to this whole step, knowing that that's three, two, one. I think I've made my point there. So I'm going to jump up to this next one and do the same thing. One, three, two, one. This is just the exercise version. It's, it's kind of a sit around pondering about the layout of the guitar type of practice, very different than other types of practice where you're trying to get maybe, um, a, a song down or a chord change down very different you're really kind of thinking and less less playing 
fewer notes can be still really great practice by thinking very hard about what you're playing and what the relationships are. One, five, one, seven, six, five, if you need to count down, one, five, one. If one is here, five is always here, always, forever. Anywhere on the fifth string, one, five, one, five, one, five, one, five. Fifth string, one, five, okay? Uh, five, six, seven, one, so five, one, five, six, seven, one. One, 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 same note, same note, found it. Okay, this next string is gonna be the same exact thing. One, three, two, one, just like we wrote out in the diagram. Uh, one, five, six, seven, one, one, one. Okay, great. Again, it's not one always, it's just one for our purposes here to find those uh, distances. Okay, here's our note. There's three. Three, two, one. One, five, six, seven, one. One, 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 one. Second string. Three, two, one. One, one, five is a different interval shape between strings two and three. Found it. Okay, I can't go to the left, so I'm gonna go one, five, six, seven, one. Now that's what I wrote in the diagrams. If you go up an exercise, you always wanna do it back down because you wanna do, we need to repeat so much anyway when we practice. Let's repeat for in different angles, different directions, different contexts, uh, much better to do it that way than to just repeat it again going the same direction. So let's start on the high string and do all of them down. I'll just do that quickly. One, five, six, seven, one, same note. One, three, two, one, same note. One, five, six, seven, one, same note. One, three, two, one, same note. One, five, six, seven, one, same note. One, three, two, one, same note. One, five, six, seven, one, same note. One, I've never done it with this uh, rhythm before, it's kind of funny. One, three, two, one, same note. One, five, six, seven, one, same note. Uh, kind of fun to do it that way. One, three, two, one, same note. Okay, so that's kind of the play version of how I want you to actually play it on the fretboard and walk between the notes in that way. Now the real goal, as I've been saying, is just to be able to visualize that and not play the in-between thing. This is where it's really freaking cool because you have now chunked your information. You have now created this little shortcut view of how you can see uh, a pretty wide distance on the fretboard, uh, a pretty far distance. That's usually weird to, to kind of think, okay, just like I said, if this is one, this is five. You know, that's 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 great. Once you get that down, it's so easy. Uh, we don't as often think, you know, if this is this note, that's the same note, right? So you need this little connecting bridge in between. So now we're gonna do the same thing and you just visualize those in-between notes. It's crucial that you do think of those in-between notes because otherwise you will just remember, oh, on the last string I played 12th fret, so I'm gonna play the 12th fret again this time. Okay, so I'm playing this note. I'm thinking of that bridge and then playing that note. Great, next string. Thinking of those distances, found the same note. Thinking of those distances, okay, playing this note. Already did that one. Okay, so next note, there's the same pitch. There's the same pitch. I'm telling you, it's, I think it's gonna be really cool when you do this. As simple as it seems. and then back down. Don't just jump to those frets because you know they're those frets. Think of the bridge in between. Uh, very powerful. I'm really excited to show you all the possibilities that open up once you can move notes around and see them clearly. All these options of taking the same note and moving it around uh, via octave or via unison all over the guitar. Um, it's really going to be a fun process to now use that information to manipulate chords and find voicings all over the guitar. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in the next video. So make sure you're subscribed and you have the bell notification on. If you want to get an email when I put out a new video, I put out a new lesson every Tuesday. You can sign up to get an email for it in the description below. If you haven't watched through the other videos of this series yet, of course, I recommend that you go through and watch them, at least speed watch through them to just get exposed to this stuff because there's a lot of really cool, really important, really useful ideas. Um, definitely a lot of theory that is very useful and I'm building on all of that as I go along, but also some really good technique tips as well as some thorough step-by-step -step exercises that are really powerful. And of course, it will be useful to know that stuff because in this series coming up right around the corner, we're going to be talking about some much more advanced chord theory stuff. Some of the chord type 
information that kind of boggles our minds sometimes with um, extensions, nines, 11, 13, sharp 11s, chords that go out of a key, chromatic chords, um, modulating, stuff like that, all really cool stuff. Um, and so I look forward to seeing you in those future lessons. Until next time, happy practicing, and thanks so much.